Hi, this is Darlene Hutton. I'm with QRS Educational Services. In this video, we will be looking at oral airways and nasopharyngeal airway, and we will also be doing a short scenario on a patient presenting in respiratory arrest. Please remember in real life to don on your gloves. When we're looking at oral airway, we've got a few different sizes here. The size you decide upon is going to be based on the measurement from the angle of the mandible to the entrance of the mouth. When we insert the oral airway, you're going to be inserting it halfway, upside down in this direction, turning it, and then continuing to advance. You don't want to push the tongue down and you need to ensure that the size of the oral airway is not too big or too small so that it doesn't interfere with that tongue being uh, an obstruction. So the only contraindication to the oral airway is a patient who has an active gag reflex. In many situations you may have a patient who's presenting with a compromised airway. You need to maintain a patent airway but the patient is still conscious. In that case, we may opt to put in a nasopharyngeal tube. The only contraindication to insertion of the nasopharyngeal tube is a patient who has a basal skull fracture or a suspected basal skull fracture. So anyone presenting with fractures in the face, we can make that assumption. This would not go in that patient. When we insert the nasopharyngeal tube, you want to make sure that the angle or the beveled edge is going in toward the septum. You will ensure that your nasal pharyngeal tube is well lubricated and insert without feeling any resistance. If you do, do not continue to go beyond that. So that is how we landmark for placement size and we've discussed some of the contraindications for both. So now we're going to look at a brief scenario in a patient presenting in a respiratory arrest. I've come to this patient, first thing I do is I've established that they are unresponsive. They are not breathing or there is absence of normal breathing. While I'm doing a pulse check, I've already called for help and activation of the emergency medical response. I will take 10 seconds, no more, to do a pulse check. If I feel a pulse check, I'm going to continue on with my next assessment. If I do not feel a pulse check, then I'm going to be immediately uh, initiating compressions. In this particular case, I do feel a pulse, so I know that they do have a viable heart rate at this moment. So the next things that I assess are the airway and breathing. When I do a check of the airway, I need to open up the airway to visualize if there are any obstructions there. Two ways to open up the airway. If there's no suspected C-spine injury, I'm going to do a head tilt chin lift and that will automatically take the tongue out of the um, airway. And it's usually the tongue that does obstruct the airway, so just the simple act will often alleviate the obstruction. If there is a C-spine precaution, you cannot do that head tilt chin lift and in that case what you need to do is a jaw thrust maneuver. And in doing that, you go just at the junction of the mandibular angle and you're going to lift the lower jaw up so that it also will take the tongue out of the way. So my airway is patent. I see no obstruction. That's the second part of the CAB, circulation airway. The third part is the breathing. And I'm going to ensure that there is no breathing. I'm going to take the airway that I have determined to be the proper size. I'm going to insert it. I'm going to take my Ambu bag and I'm going to start bagging the patient. Now I find in practice some people have issues in how to handle the Ambu bag correctly. There are two techniques. The technique that I'm doing right now is called the C technique. I take my index finger and my thumb, putting it down on the mask, and the three fingers left are underneath the jaw, and that's really to help ensure that there's a seal. What I will then do is I will deliver breathing, and in that process I will determine that I do see chest rise, and I will be breathing for my patient, being a respiratory arrest, every five to six seconds, so 10 to 12 breaths per minute. So the C technique is one technique that works very, very well, 
But I found in experience that there are a lot of healthcare practitioners who are attempting to uh, provide airway uh, maintenance to the patient, and it may be that, that they have arthritis in their hand or they have a really small, small hand, and they're not able to stretch their hand the full um, circumference of the mask. So another technique that uh, we have trained people on, I'm not sure if there's even a name to it, but what you do is um, you take your whole hand and put it on the mask. In doing so, you want to make sure that you don't obstruct the airway, so you need to maintain that head tilt chin lift. And so in reminding us to do that, just take your little pinky and make sure that that's under the jaw to remind you, maintain a head tilt chin lift. Now my whole hand is putting pressure on that mask and I might be able to obtain a better seal with this technique and that's just an alternate if you are uh, in charge of bagging this patient. The mask over the patient's face, it's important that you remember the little tip, narrow goes to the nose. I found sometimes people, they just haven't had the experience and they will have the mask improperly positioned and that will impact on your uh, ability to provide airway management. So as a nurse in charge of airway management, our roles are to ensure that we have assessed that the airway is patent, we've assessed that the patient is not breathing, we've effectively inserted the oral airway, and we have the ambu bag on the patient, and we are delivering one breath every five to six seconds. I hope you've found benefit from this video. Thank you.